Grace, peace, and mercy are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of God's Word that we're focusing on for our sermon tonight is from the book of Hebrews, from chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. These words are printed for you in your bulletin, and I invite you to rise as I read them. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Namely, Jesus, the Son of God, let us continue to hold on to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. So let us approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Dear Heavenly Father, these words are yours, and so we know that they are the truth. We ask that you would increase our faith through them. Amen. You may be seated. Dear fellow redeemed, as you know, our our theme for our Lenten services this year is Jesus, our great high priest. And so we're focusing on how Jesus fits this role, how he serves us today as our High priest, just as the, the high priests of, of Old Testament times served God's people, the Israelites. And tonight, we're focusing on his compassion, how he serves with compassion. Now, our text tonight from the book of Hebrews, it, it echoes the entire theme for the book. Uh, the, the, this letter was written to a, a people with a Jewish background. And, and the, the main point that, that the, the writer wanted them to take home was this. He was encouraging them to hold unswervingly to the hope that they professed. That was the writer's wish. And the hope that they professed was none other than Jesus Christ as their Savior. The hope that they professed was that Jesus was the fulfillment of, their, of the Old Testament prophecies. He is the Messiah. Now, these Jewish believers, they were under intense pressure. They believed that Jesus was their Savior, but they were being pressured by, by their family, by their culture, by their own sinful flesh, to walk away from their faith. They were being pressured to, to give in to this, to this uh, temptation to deny Jesus and to go back to their old ways where they thought that they could work for their own salvation. They, they trusted in themselves to be holy and righteous enough in God's sight to earn their way into heaven. Now this temptation to deny Jesus, they certainly were not the first people to feel this, this pull. Tonight we read about how confident Peter was that he would never, ever deny Jesus, that he was willing to go to to prison, to to death, to stand by his Savior. And of course, what did he do? He's standing in the courtyard of the high priest as he denies knowing Jesus. He makes this beautiful confession of faith. Jesus, you are, are the Son of God. And then he stands in the courtyard and says, I don't even know this man that you're talking about. These believers that, that the, the writer to the Hebrews is writing to, they're not the, the last ones to feel this pull, this temptation either. We feel this temptation as well. Perhaps you're not tempted to stand up in a crowd and deny your faith, to deny that, that you believe that Jesus is your Savior. But we're tempted in, in a, a little different way. We're tempted to, to live our lives in a way that is, is denying our faith in Jesus. We're tempted to live in a way that that conforms to the ways of this world and is divorced from our confession that Jesus is the Lord, that he rules and reigns in our hearts. What the writer of the Hebrews is saying in our text tonight is this. Jesus gets it. He understands this temptation. Because in Jesus, we have a compassionate high priest who is able to sympathize with us in our weakness. Now, Satan is, is sneaky, and he's tricky, and he's smart. And he comes at us from a, a lot of different angles, depending on who we are, what our personality is, and what our situation is in life. So the, the, the pull of temptation is concealed. And sometimes we don't even know that it's Satan who is doing this pulling. And the temptations that he, he throws at us vary greatly. So for you, maybe, maybe he's tempting you to abandon your vocation the role that, he is, that God has put you in, the, the responsibilities that he's handed you. Maybe it's as a, a, a faithful uh, mother or father, obedient son or daughter. And, and Jesus understands this. He knows what those temptations 
are like. What was Satan tempting Jesus to do as he, as he tempted him in the wilderness? He said, abandon your mission. Give up your, your vocation as Redeemer, Savior of the world, and, and look how much glory can be yours. Maybe a, another temptation presents itself to you. Perhaps you're tempted when all the responsibilities of this life are just pushing down on you so much and you don't even feel like you can stand up under the heavy load of everything you have to accomplish, everything you have to get done. Perhaps it's when this world just heaps so much scorn and ridicule on everything that you believe and everything that you hold sacred to the point where you begin to, to question, is it really worth it to be a believer of Jesus? Is what the Bible says really true and right and accurate? Again, Jesus knows how we feel. We heard it in, our, in our, our passion history for tonight. What did he pray in the Garden of Gethsemane? Lord, let this cup pass from me. He said, this responsibility seems like it's, it's too much for me. I don't know if I can do it. But ultimately, what does he say? Your will be done, not mine. And certainly he knows better than anyone what it means to be mocked and scorned and ridiculed. Since Jesus knows temptation, since he humbled himself to take on our human flesh and endure this, he's able to deal gently with us in our sin. In a following reading from the Passion History, you'll hear about what happened with Peter. As he stands in the courtyard of the high priest and he denies Jesus three times, and then Jesus looks at him. He sees his Savior who he's just denied. What does Jesus do? He doesn't yell at him. He doesn't scream. He doesn't abandon him. He looks at him. And he preaches a sermon to Peter with just that look. He says, Peter, I, I see you. I see your sin. I know what you've done. Jesus does the same thing for us in his law. He says, I see your sin. I acknowledge it. It is a big deal. But I'm not going anywhere. I am right here, and with me, there is still hope. There is forgiveness. Now, when we feel like Peter must have felt in that moment, when we realize that, that we've sinned, that we've made this huge mistake, that, that we've, we've let someone down or wronged them, when we realize that someone's going to be disappointed with us, what's our, our natural reaction? We want to hide, right? And, and it, sometimes it's like that for us with Jesus, too. When we realize we've sinned, when we realize that we've fallen into one of Satan's traps, we want to hide from Jesus. But our compassionate high priest encourages us to do exactly the opposite. When you do sin, when you've fallen into one of these temptations, don't hide from Jesus, go to him. Because just like the high priest of Israel, Jesus understands what it is to be tempted. But unlike them, he never gave in. Jesus never sinned. He never went astray. And so this puts him in a very unique position, knowing sin and that yet never giving into it, to be a help for us when we are tempted, when we fall. We know that we can go to Jesus boldly and confidently for his grace in our times of need. We can go to him and we can see the wounds in his hands, in his feet, in his side, we can see the wounds that he endured to pay for our sin. Go to him and understand that Jesus doesn't just sympathize with us in our weakness. He makes up for it. That's why he worked so hard to, to live under the law, to fight the temptation of the devil. That's why he was willing to go to the cross to lay down his life for us, to pay off our debt, to succeed where we fail to conquer and defeat the enemies who had conquered and defeated us. Knowing the gospel, knowing that Jesus fulfilled the law and freed us from our slavery to sin, has won forgiveness for when we fall into these temptations of the devil. Now we can look to our compassionate Savior with confidence, with joy. We can look to him when we fall, and we can look to him before we fall when we feel those temptations of the world, of the devil, and of our own sinful flesh. And with joy in our hearts and, and his love as our motivation, we can seek to walk in his ways, to live a life that preaches Christ and him crucified, not just with our lips, but with how we live, 
The way that we spend our time, the way that we spend our money, the way that we set our priorities, and the way that we fulfill our vocations. And we do all of this not in a, in a vain attempt to fulfill God's law ourselves, not to, to work for our own righteousness, but we do it out of joy. We do it out of gratefulness for the fact that Jesus has done all of that for us. Now, this ability to resist temptation, to walk away from, from sin, it's a skill that grows with our faith. And we know that our faith grows by spending time in God's word and making use of the sacraments. So make a habit of, of, of going to your Savior in his, in his word. Make a habit of gathering together with your brothers and sisters in Christ and hearing God's word in, in a group just like you are doing tonight. Make a habit of, of using the wonderful tool of, of the body and blood of our Savior to, for the strengthening of your faith and the, for the forgiveness of your sins. Because the Lord promises that these gifts, He will use them to strengthen and sustain you in your faith. As sinful human beings, we know that in this life we face temptation. And it's especially in those times that we need to remember the compassion of our great high priest. May we always run boldly and confidently to his throne of grace, knowing that that's exactly what we are going to receive, that he will fulfill the promise that he gives to us in our text, that when we approach his grace, because of what Jesus has done, we won't receive damnation and, and condemnation. We'll receive mercy. We'll receive grace to help us in our time of need. Not because we're good enough, but because Jesus was good enough. Because we have a compassionate high priest who strengthens us in our weakness, who atones for our weakness, and who sympathizes with us in our weakness. Amen. Please rise for the blessing.